points you've made, uh, uh, particularly uh, when it comes to how we write the history of Europe. Uh, but uh, Mr. Malinov next, Dakono Grammatitakis, uh, Julie Ward, and we'll close the list there. It's really just a, the beginning of a debate. Of course, it will not end after even the adoption of our report. Uh, the, the, the big difficulty is that we should try to distinguish between what we want for Europe and what we want uh, actually in general for European future and what we can teach in schools, which is something very different. Uh, so just to start with defending the very idea of this report, because this has been questioned, and by the way, uh, uh, we will always have problems with explaining why we're doing this. Because, as you can see, even in this committee, it's not so obvious. First, there is some general principle that we can discover uh, whenever there have been any organized political community. And this is a general principle that no political regime, no political community, no union can avoid. And this is the fundamental right, so to speak, uh, of the European Union to put the question about teaching about itself in schools. And this is the fundamental right of any community or union to try to convince its members, in our case in its citizens, that it is a just political union, that it makes sense, and to try to educate its citizens or its members in some sense of respect and to value that particular union. Otherwise, the union, any kind of union, including European Union, wouldn't make sense. It should not exist if it doesn't have the will to try to win the approval of its members, member states and citizens. That's why we have the right to offer this uh, initiative report about teaching European Union in schools. I think this should always be said. No union can exist without that. Now, what can we actually teach young people? Because I would assume that a bad approach can actually alienate young people from European Union or at least makes it as abstract for them as it is. Bearing in mind that there will always be a very strong current in European public opinion against European Union against the very existence. I believe that the best thing, and that makes it difficult to have a universal scheme, is to connect the value of European Union with the history of the, of the country, of the, of the particular country. I believe that any member state uh, can develop methodology and uh, approach that can prove that from historical point of view the existence of European Union is good. I can think of a common approach for all ex-communist states, member states. Obviously, there is a valid argument for all of them, because we know what European Union was for us between 1945 and 1989. This is not for some of the other countries, but I think that for at least 10 states, 10 member states, it's a very valid point. Second, I think that we should stress not how European Union works, which is a political science level of explaining that. I would like to do that. I'm a professor of political science, by the way. I know how to teach that to students. But I think that the only connection, direct connection with young people is about their rights and freedoms in European Union. Rights and freedoms. So I will stop here, because otherwise I have to talk about everything else, which is quite a lot. But I believe specific connection with history, and this is not that every country has its own point of view. I don't think so. There are two or three general, general ideas about Europe. Western Europe, we can say that in Western Europe there are two or three countries that have a specifics about ex-communist countries. In general, most of them share, I mean, the public opinion in general shares some of basic presuppositions, and something that, especially for young people, rights and freedoms, to explain, because they live in European, they are born in European, and they are socializing in European, and they have no idea about the alternative. So through rights and freedom, we can explain the reason for its existence, 
and then give them an alternative, not to scare them, just to try to make them think what would have been to live in a country like yours without being a member of the European Union that gives you these rights and freedom. Which rights and freedom can, freedoms can be preserved, which not? Something like that. I'm speaking from experience, by the way, here. I'm going very often to schools in Bulgaria and I see what students react. History and their freedoms. Well, of course there are many other things, but I try to be as helpful as possible for, for writing the, the report. Thank you for your contribution.